I would say that you know Facebook is great for sharing cat videos and photos of your friends and all of that, but it's also a really important kind of public space where a lot of political organizing happens, a lot of you know political news and information is shared. Governments and officials use it to get out the word. If you are in the town square where people are fighting to get their voices heard or something like that, you know, battle over that space just like you might in the real world and there's real stakes involved for people who want to get their message out. For a long time people have, have treated the internet as this kind of utopian space that can be free from the real world and separate and um, as more and more people come online and organizing marches and protests that have real effect on the real world. Um, I think the idea that, that you could separate those two is definitely going away. <laughs> Internet troll is kind of a broad term that has many different uses. Um, I would say a troll is somebody who uh, does something just for attention, or mainly to, to get, get attention. And while you might think of it usually as somebody who's leaving a nasty comment on a, on a Facebook post or a news article, they're also being used by governments to kind of get attention for their message or to derail opponents or um, all sorts of things that you might want to do on the you know, social media landscape. Yeah, I mean, moderators are kind of like the unseen workforce that really makes social media and the internet possible. Um, whenever you report something on Facebook or on Twitter, that goes usually to a real person who has to look and see whether or not it's uh, it's appropriate for the for the service. And so you have tens, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world screening this content, looking at this content. Um, and I think, for me, it, they're important because uh, it shows that, you know, what you do on the internet has consequences. Um, there are lots of people who are being exposed to all these terrible things, basically because we have uh, social media and it's grown so big and so fast that the only way to kind of control it is to have this factory-like um, process where people are kind of trying to, trying to screen it. And so I think it's important to keep in mind that all of this technology is really at, at the bottom, it's human. Social media companies and these big tech companies, mostly in the US, have taken the role of governments in terms of regulating speech and deciding what is or what isn't appropriate online. Um, they've kind of taken uh, the role also of media companies in determining what people can see in their news feed, what's important. These social media companies, although they say they have good intentions and have a lot of um, good slogans and stuff, at the bottom line they're private companies that are driven by profit. You know, if, if activists say, oh, we're being censored from, a, from Facebook, Facebook will send them a, you know, stupid form letter or something. But if an advertiser gets mad about something online, if a lot of advertisers start worrying about some issue, that all of a sudden everything drops and, and they'll retweak the entire you know, platform for them. Um, and so that to me is kind of the, the major issue is who has the influence over these companies right now and it's definitely um, not, not the users and not the people. One of the big differences now is that you know people live their lives online, share you know, their political views, organize, but it's all happening kind of on these private platforms that are being you know, surveilled and, and used by these companies to target advertising. And ultimately, you know, um, these companies are kind of data extraction companies and they're trying to amass as much information about as many people as possible. You know, I've written a lot about the bad parts of the internet, about trolls, hackers, you know, online drug sales, um, and and what I've realized is all these things, they're not kind of the dark side or some kind of alternate bad reality, but they're the, the products of the internet and how, how the internet works, how the economy is set up, 
Uh, you see that in it again and again where the tools or systems that had been set up for something that was supposedly good are being used by uh, bad, bad actors or bad people. Um, and so it's one and the same. Those are kind of, you have to look at it all as a system.